Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, MAPE's Systems and Solutions for Gauged Porcelain Tiles and Slabs. Some quick housekeeping just before we start. Your phones are on mute. If you have any questions, please type them into the box in the corner of your screen and we'll answer them at the end of our session, time permitting, or we'll answer them via email after. And you can always send questions to MAPE Digital at mape.com. Now, without any further delays, I'd like to introduce today's speaker, Logan Rivas. Logan is the manager of technical services at MAPE. He's responsible for the product support department, the architectural support department, and regional field representatives. Logan grew up around floor coverings and Shortly after completing his bachelor's in business administration from the University of Texas at Arlington, he began his career in the industry. He brings over 15 years of experience in floor coverings, and after spending time in the distribution side of things and on the floor contracting side of the business, he's joined us and we're happy to have him. Logan, the floor is yours. Thank you, John, appreciate that. Um, I appreciate everybody joining us this afternoon and so as you can see on your screen uh, we are talking about uh, gauge porcelain tile and I know uh, this has been a, a popular topic and um, something that we have discussed within the, uh, the webinar series before um, and that that was an AIA presentation um, which are great and um, for those industry professionals that need uh, that need those credits and need that continuing education to be on top of their game. Um, you know, those are fantastic uh, 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 learning opportunities. Um, but one of the, the downsides to those presentations is that they uh, they have to be pretty generic and we can't really get into our products. Um, we can just talk about product categories. And so um, the, the, the hope here is that um, today we can really kind of focus on MAPE uh, and what MAPE brings to the table. Uh, and what MAPE has done um, over the last decade um, here in the United States, and you know, promoting um, not just uh, not just our products, but knowledge and uh, um, supporting this segment of the industry, and, and and you know, ultimately the standards that have come about that are continuing to be developed, and um, you know, hopefully shaping a, a bigger and brighter future for the tile industry, and, and certainly for, for gauge porcelain tile, and so. Um, you know, with, with that in mind, I mean, it's been, you know, I mentioned, uh, you know, the better part of a decade uh, it has been about that long um, since that word thin tile, uh, thin porcelain tile came into uh, came into our, our frame of consciousness. And uh, we started having to look at this and figure out what to do with it. And uh, I know a lot of people were um, skeptical of it, uh, skeptical of the, uh, the staying power that, you know, thought perhaps this was a fad, something that, you know, designers would fall in love with. And then, you know, they'd um have some failures and it would fall by the wayside and wouldn't have to worry about it anymore but uh, that is certainly not the case and um it's uh the popularity has grown year over year and um you know and and uh, and we uh and, and we're, we're proud to have been a part of that and um and and as as the um as the the category has grown the the idea here at mape has been not just to you know see what we have within our line uh, that can work for it, but also develop specific products for this uh, segment of the industry and, um, you know, with specific characteristics that could be helpful. And so that's kind of the goal today is to go through that, um, talk about, you know, what that might be, how that applies to the standards. Um, again, we're not uh, gonna gonna spend too much time um, on the specific standards um, like we might in other presentations and, and certain things like handling, things like that. We're really gonna Try to focus on what MAPE can do for you and, and how that applies to the standards. And so um, we will start that right now. And um, well, what we um, before we get too far into it, I, I want to talk a little bit about MAPE since that's kind of what we're doing here. And I, and I, I don't know if everybody knows this um, out in the industry. You know, we uh, um, are often thought of as you know just the the uh, um, yeah yeah MAPE. You know, they're the uh, the the tile and uh, tile and grout you know the mortar and grout company the uh, you know they make some glues and, and things like that and certainly we're proud of that uh, that part of our um, our product offering um, and and for being known for that we take a lot of pride in that um, but 
there's a lot more to my pay and I want to give you a quick overview of that just so you have a, a better understanding of you know when something like this product is new and innovative and um, you know why we're committed to promoting that and um, you know and, and you know showing the level of commitment that we have and committing the resources we have to it and it starts from the, the very beginning we've been around for for over 83 years and um, uh, Rodolfo Squinzi started our company back in uh, in 1937 in Milan, Italy, and um, the Squinzi family still uh, owns MAPE, and um, the, uh, the the third generation has just kind of taken over, and um, uh, Marco and Veronica Squinzi, uh, brother and sister, and, um, you know, we're proud of our Italian heritage. I mean, it's, uh, when you talk about setting tile, it's a, it's a, it's a good place to be from uh, when you think about uh, uh, Roman mosaics that have uh, existed for you know thousands of years and to this day still look incredible. Um, you know, so uh, we're we're proud of our Italian heritage. Um, we've been here in North America for well over 40 years now and built a strong base here. Um, but again, this is uh, to hope hopefully help you understand. Uh, and and I've got some statistics here just to again give you a, a brief overview. Um, you know, uh, for a uh, for a, a, a mortar, you know, for a thin set and grout company, um, you know, almost three billion dollars a year is uh, that's a lot of thin set and grout. And so um, we've got 81 plants in 35 countries on five continents. We've got over 10,000 employees. We make over 5,500 different products. Um, you know, you're looking at 25,000 tons, not 25,000 pounds, 25,000 tons daily being produced around the world in Mape. And so again, this is not so much to um you know to say hey look at us but it's more just to give you a better understanding um that you're dealing with a global uh company um and what what's interesting and, and really what makes my face so special is you know to have this sort of global reach and um global community uh my pay community um but still be family owned and and so uh we're a, it's a very it's, it's a very unique experience working for this company it's great um, you know, but uh, uh, certainly, again, uh, it, it, it goes well beyond just our borders here and, and in fact, all over the world and, um, you know, with our roots back in, in Europe. Um, the, our commitment to research and development is really a testament to that. And so we've got 31 R&D centers around the world, um, quite a few here within the United States. Um, you know, the and this goes back to the Squinzi family and, and commitment to research and uh, development for um, you know new products, new technologies, and um, and again, so not just on on our side, but um, just to promote the industry as a whole and and find new technologies for the construction industry and um, things that are more sustainable and and things that um, you know uh, open more doors for uh, for our industry and and we'll talk a little bit about that and and why GPT fits into that and. Um, and again, why you know why we've taken such a leadership role um, here within the U.S. Again, just as part of the overview, um, you're, we've got um, if you look at the blue dots across the U.S., these are uh, MAPE facilities, um, uh, most of which are uh, factories. Um, you know, we've got a couple warehouses out there, um, but we've got them. Um, you know, here, our headquarters here for North America are in Deerfield Beach. That's where I am. Uh, and we also right down the road have a plant in uh, Fort Lauderdale. Uh, we have several in uh, in Georgia, up in the Dalton area. Uh, we've got in Virginia and uh, New Jersey, West Chicago, Illinois, Garland, Texas, which is in the Dallas area, Tempe, Arizona, and then San Bernardino, California. And and again, um, and then with we've got four or five sprinkled across uh, um, Canada as well. We've even got one down in Puerto Rico. And so, it, it, you know. We, we deal with a lot of uh, um, resources that, um, uh, raw materials that are commodity items. You know, we have to have that reach. We have to, we have to strategically locate ourselves both to um, bring in uh, the raw materials that are coming in 24 seven um, as we're putting finished goods out the door um, 24 seven as well. And, you know, we've gotta be located to where we can pull those resources and, um, you know, and then be as efficient as possible uh, and, and, and distributing those products um, out to our customers. And so uh, we have a huge capital investment here um, in the US and like I said, around the world. And so, um, and when we talk about the MAPE family, um, and this is kind of the last section here talking about 
about my pay in general. Um, and why this is important, though, is I want you to understand is uh, it, we're, we do a, a lot more than just uh, the floor covering stuff, just tile and stone and, and adhesives and things like that. We have our concrete restorations division. Um, you know, that's like they do a lot of Department of Transportation work. Uh, you know, uh, you got to repair um, heavy concrete structures like a bridge or, you know, a parking structure. Um, they, they specialize in those products. We have a whole marine division because most of the products that uh, go into cruise ships are very specialized. Uh, UTT for tunneling, and it's not just products for, you know, finishing a tunnel. It's, uh, I mean, up to machines that bore the holes and um, cement additives uh, division. Um, again, this is like tankers moving around for large scale, you know, concrete pours and things like that where specific uh, needs need to be met. Um, and uh, we've got our, uh, uh, the TNS program, uh, which is a part of our sport flooring. We've got, uh, you know, turf division too within there. And, um, you know, they make all sorts of products for, uh, for sports and sport floors. And then we even have sister companies like Vinaville and Polyglass. Um, you know, Polyglass is a, a, a waterproofing and roofing um, membrane company, uh, roofing materials company. And then uh, Vinaville, which is a, a really unique feature for, um, uh, for MAPE that, and the MAPE group because it, it shows a lot of vertical integration. Now we, we collaborate with a lot of our, our divisions and, and with our sister companies because, um, you know, we, again, it's about pulling technology and, and Vinaville makes the polymers we use. When you hear those terms in our industry, like a polymer modified mortar or grout, you know, this is, um, this is where we get them from. And as opposed to having to go out on the open market and see what's available, um, we, we are able to, um, work with uh, with Vinaville and you know to have make sure when we're trying to design a, a product you know so for instance GPT you know, where we, we need certain features that um, we need this uh, these products um, you know to do that are different from what we've done in the past we can uh, tell them exactly what we're looking for in a polymer um, you know the performance characteristics and you know certainly the cost and all those sorts of things and you know work with them and, and, and make sure we're a, you know, obviously a, 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 a very high priority uh, customer for our uh, uh, our friends over at Beneville. And so again, um, this is just a, a quick overview of, of what all we do here at MAPE. Um, and so so again, like I said, we're very proud uh, if, if you know us as a uh, as a thin set and grout company, but uh, we, we do quite a bit more. So we're talking about systems today. And when we when we talk about a system, um, from our standpoint, we're, we're talking, um, you know, in a, as, as tile installations have become uh, more technically complicated over the years and more and more products are being used, um, you know, things like surface prep are becoming bigger and bigger and we'll certainly get into that. Um, you know, it's wanting to make sure that everything within the entire installation, all the products are, um, are, are very, they're all equally important, um, but, um, you know, and they all play a role in the success of the project. Um, so we need to make sure that each one is compatible um, and that that whole system will perform well. And it's also nice to have a single source provider, um, you know, certainly on the design side and, and, and on the product project management and for ownership um, to, to have one place to go to have your answer, your questions answered. And, um, you know, and, and certainly if there's any issues to, you know, where you're not running around trying to get 10 different manufacturers together and, and, and get them to work together and figure things out. So um, what we're working on here is we'll, we'll talk about trying to start from the bottom up um, in these installations and, and the products we provide um, for them. So when you talk about, uh, you know, what was once thin tile, what's now GPT, gauge porcelain tile, um, you know, that term porcelain. So, I mean, uh, the question often is, I mean, so is there something different? I mean, is the, well, you know, porcelain's nothing new, right? I mean, we've been dealing with porcelain for, um, you know, for the last 30 years easily. Um, you know, and, and uh, the advent of porcelain tile uh, certainly changed the industry and um, certainly on our side, um, that's where, you know, these polymer modified mortars came from really was um, the advent of porcelain tile and porcelain is very popular uh, for, for tile manufacturing because of its durability, um, ease of, um, you know, e ease of ownership, you know, low maintenance, and, and then the, um, so many, so many, um, so many different um, um, uh, advantages to using porcelain. And so 
Uh, but nothing's changed on that side. I mean, we're still talking about, you know, clay, the kale and clay, um, feldspar, sand, silica, everything gets ground up into a very, very fine uh, powder. Um, you know, the, the ingredients are mixed for, depending on what they're trying to do with it, um, you know, and then ultimately it is pressed and fired at really high temperatures to give us, uh, to give us our, our, our porcelain. And so um, from that standpoint, we're not changing the ingredients. It's uh, really how they're um, how they're manufactured and you know that, that's changed and why we're seeing tiles the this this new form of porcelain tile the the, the gauge porcelain tile and um, so on the top left you see um, the traditional way of, of, um, of uh, a porcelain tile being pressed and so you've got the powder is poured into a die that's compressed you know somewhere in the 5,000 to 7,500 tons of PSI um, and it comes out basically it's the shape that it's going to be you know when it's finished and it certainly will go down the line and it'll be fired and then it'll be finished and you know texture can be added you know graphics um, but uh, you know that it, again it's, it's it's pressed in a die um, whereas if you look on the top right um, you've got the powder uh, laid out on a conveyor belt and it's uh, being pressed without a form and so unrestrained and it's compressed it over 10,000 tons PSI. Um, and uh, you see in the lower left, um, some GPT in production uh, with design. So it, you know, porcelain, um, the, the design features for porcelain have changed and, and become so intricate over the years and so detailed. Um, you know, it's, it's really incredible. You can mimic just about any look that's out there already, such as stone and, um, you know, uh, you know, and traditional looks and the, you know, that people associate with tile. Um, but now in this, these extremely large formats, you know, the, the design possibilities are really endless because, um, you know, you're not just limited to that, you know, that traditional tile look, um, stone look. And so you, you there's all sorts of, uh, you know, you can call it murals, I mean, artwork, I mean, there's so many things you can do because it's just a matter of printing. And so, um, you know, and then the, the large format here, um, you know, so it's not broken up like you would if you were trying to piece it together out of 12 by 24s or, you know, the, the things that have limited um, the the industry in the past on the design side are kind of falling by the wayside because of uh, what you're seeing here. And so that's really exciting for the industry. Um, and, and like I said, it, that's and that's why this isn't going away. And that's why this is becoming more and more popular. Uh, and then finally, that last picture you're seeing, uh, that's a uh, that's a mesh backing being applied. Uh, typically, you'll see that uh, in the thinner gauges, so like your three and four millimeter, um, to add add additional strength. You don't see it nearly as much uh, in the larger knife. It's, even in the in the small formats, you don't. I mean, it's not required. You'll cer certainly see um, uh, GPT without it, but uh, typically it's a polyurethane or epoxy resin uh, that that keeps keeps it in place. But uh, um, so yeah, certainly you will see that, especially in the smaller and then the thinner, excuse me, uh, the, the thinner formats. Uh, as far as how they're made, uh, there's two different technologies um, over in Europe. And so lamina that uses plates um, to compress and then continua, which uses drums, um, and rollers. Uh, I'm sure they have a million reasons why each one is better. Um, but from our standpoint, it gives us the same thing. Um, and so um, but again, you know, it's the porcelain that's uh, that's pressed and, and then ultimately fired and finished into these um, large sheets. And we've talked about it already, so it's not going anywhere. Um, it's uh, on the sustainability side, you're using fewer raw materials, less energy, um, you know, the uh, shipping is easier, the, uh, um, you, you do a lot of scoring and snapping with these products. Um, and the, the um, you know cutting drilling um, the the ability to um, take a panel and fabricate on site um, is, is is a big advantage um, things that weren't really possible before and so I said and, and then ultimately it's the look it's the design and so and that's and that's great I mean um, when when our industry has products that um, you know that that people want that you know people are excited about and um 
you know, and the visuals you can provide them. And so, and that's, that's great for the overall health of the industry is to, you know, and it's important, you know, when these new technologies come out again, that they're supported. Um, so we can open more doors for our industry and make sure it continues to grow and, you know, obviously not shrink. So we'll talk about the standards. Um, the, uh, when we, I mentioned, you know, the the kind of the early years of this and, you know, a lot of uh, angst and anxiety out there about, you know, what's the, you know, how, how are you going to do this? I mean, how do we, how does this get installed? How, uh, you know, what tools do I need? I mean, who, you know, who's qualified to do it? Who's qualified to train us to do it? I mean, um, you know, should I use this, uh, you know, type of fence set or, you know, what, it, there were so many questions, um, you know, and, and, the tile industry here in um, in North America is has always been has always been governed, um, and you know there there's always been clear cut methods and standards um, for for applications. And so for those that really wanted to know and make sure they were doing it right, I mean those resources were available. And so you know and that was certainly different um, you know for the industry. And um, Mape uh, was 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 very involved and. Um, like I said, not just helping train people uh, from the early days of this, but um, also, you know, realizing the need for these standards and, and being involved in that process. And so that's, that's always been a trademark uh, at MAPE. Um, and and, and, there's, and we have tons of partners in the industry that, that are very committed as well. Um, so certainly this is not just a MAPE thing, um, but our, our director of technical services, Jim Whitfield, has been very involved over the years in the developing these standards and to this point to the point they're still being developed uh, there's new standards on the way um, hopefully soon um, but uh, you know and then our, our previous director of technical services Dan Marvin was heavily involved and um, you know and, and so we've, we've always been committed to that and we knew how important it was uh, for this um, for the segment of the industry um, to have a to have a, a healthy future and, um, and, and help our industry out we knew that this needed to happen and it, and it took it took some time, but in 2017, we finally we got our standards, and so um, and that's where the the term gauge porcelain tile and then gauge porcelain tile panels and slabs came from. And so that was ANSI 137.3, which dropped in 2017, and so that's the actual tile standard. Um, you know, as far as the manufacturing process um, and you know the standards that that has to meet um, to you know to be um, uh, to be in compliance with ANSI 137.3, uh, that doesn't really affect us and what we're talking about today as much. Um, we're more interested in A108.19, and that is the installation standard. So uh, we will uh, we will walk kind of walk through again um, the portions of that standard that um, really apply to my pay. There's things in there like handling and um, planning and, and some of these things that um, are very important. Um, but again, we've got presentations and, 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 and trainings we do that, you know, we'll dig deeper into that. Um, and so certainly, um, if you've never been a part of one of those, I would advise you to do that because uh, it is a very good overview of, you know, of everything in the standard. Um, so, but again, we're, we're going we're gonna, to we're, we're gonna stick to just certain aspects here. Um, so again, that word gauged, um, which is appropriate because again, we've, we've always, um, from the get-go with that term thin tile, I mean, we were always describing these by the thickness. Now, um, you know, thin tile doesn't really work anymore for a couple reasons, um, because these products are not necessarily thin. Now, certainly, you still have the three millimeter, um, you know, and then the five to six millimeter products are very popular, but you're also seeing 12 has, has become very popular, and you're even seeing 20 and 30 millimeter products out there. And so, um, you know, so gauged again is just, you know, we're, we're talking about the thickness and there are many of them out there. Um, but then the uh, less than, so if you're going to call it specifically a gauge porcelain tile, uh, so that's less than a square meter. So if, if, if you're dealing with something less than a square meter, the correct term is a gauge porcelain tile. Now the term gauge porcelain tile panels and slabs, um, that that is, if you're equal to a square meter or larger and so that again terminology wise and, and if you're shaking your head going why what's the difference who cares certainly um you know this was a collaborative effort uh, 
designing these uh, and writing these standards um, and even naming the product. And, uh, and a lot of times it, it comes down to, you know, certain areas of the country, labor is controlled different ways. And, um, you know, and there's a lot of language out there that it, it matters what something's called as far as um, which group does the work. And so, and trying to make sure we protect um, the tile industry, we had to we had to be sensitive to that, and so that's how you end up with, you know, uh, basically, uh, you know, some people wanted panels, some people wanted slabs, so we we, we called it both within the industry to make everybody happy. Um, you know, you've got 20 sections of the standard. Um, as far as the topics, we're going to go through and, and talk about uh, MAPE products. Um, we'll talk about substrates and flatness and general requirements. Um, contractor qualifications in sort of a roundabout way, um, the uh, mortar and mortar application. Uh, so that's a big one for us, obviously. And um, then getting the tile embedded on walls and floors um, and you know how, how our products play a role in that and then um, why we design things the way we do. Um, and then all that ultimately to achieve the coverage we need, which is very important for this uh, um, in, in any tile installation, but um, everything's kind of magnified and we'll kind of get into that. Uh, grouting uh, and then movement joints, <clears throat> everybody's favorite topic. Um, so with the new standard, um, what's interesting here is, you know, you might think that, okay, well, you know, so if I'm going to go, if you're telling me I need a, a certain floor flatness to install a 12 by 24 um, tile. I mean, I'm guessing I'm going to have to get it even flatter for, uh, um, you know, for if I'm going to do a five foot by 10 foot, you know, panel. And the the answer is actually no. I mean, we don't we we didn't change the uh, the 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 requirements have not changed, and so these have been the same for a long time. And so if you've got and and the, and the line of demarcation has always been that edge of 15 inches or longer. So again, that's you know, we, we've been making tiles longer than 15 inches for an awfully long time. And so, um, you know, the, in the, and I've done a presentation on this before talking about substrate prep and, um, you know, it's, it's the, the industry has always understood we need to get the tiles lined up. You know, we don't want lippage, you know, that's always, that's always been a problem that would, would, would keep, keep installers on a job and keep them from getting paid. Um, you know, so how to do that in the past has, it's always been fairly simple uh, to just uh, you know you dropping a tile in and well you can't get you can't get one one corner to, to line up with the tiles next to it and so it's sitting lower so the easiest thing to do is to just pick that tile back up and put a glob of, of thin set underneath that corner and plop it back down squish it back into place and it line out everything lines up and so um, that's always been you know the the simplest and quickest way to do it. It's not the right way to do it. Um, you know, and if if the substrate had been prepped properly and you had this, um, you had achieved what the industry standard calls for, which is an eighth of an inch over ten feet as your maximum allowable variation, and down to only a sixteenth of an inch within two feet. So again, if you're dropping twelve by twenty fours on the floor, you can't have you should not have more than a sixteenth inch of variation underneath. And if you're putting down, you know, a half inch notch. Of mortar, it shouldn't be that hard to line up all the tiles. So if you can't line them up, that means your sub your substrate is not within tolerances. But again, um, this idea that you can just pick up a tile real quick and glob some under a corner, um, that's all good and well and simple enough to achieve when you're talking about you know a, a, a wood plank tile that's you know six by thirty six or a twelve by twenty four. Um, and again, not right, but it's easy enough. I mean, you start trying to pull up, you go drop a 50 square foot, uh, 12 millimeter panel on the floor, and then you realize it's not lining up. It's not so easy to uh, just uh, pick it up, pick it back up, and throw a couple globs under the edge. And so, um, you know, and the wet suction that gets created with these, you can run into some real issues. Um, you can break uh, break these tiles and um, trying to pull them back up and um, you know, gone are the days of uh, laughing off your helper uh, breaking a, a 99 cent 12 by 12. Um, you know, the uh, you break one of these and uh, you, <laughs> it's a couple hundred dollars. So I don't, nobody's usually laughing when, when that happens. And so um, again, so but all this is to say we haven't changed the requirements for substrate prep um, and for flatness. And so 
and and it's certainly nothing's changed in the construction industry that makes you think that uh, they're going to provide you with a substrate that's within tolerances and so you're going to need to do substrate prep when um, for really any tile job but it, again it's magnified the importance of achieving um, you know this eighth of an inch over 10 feet um, or sixteenth of an inch and 24 when you're doing gauge porcelain tile installations so how do we do that in this industry and what can MAPE what products does MAPE offer to help? Um, so if we ever were gonna do substrate prep in the, uh, in the tile industry, it was gonna be mud work. And so um, that, you know, the, you know, we're gonna talk about self levelers, we're gonna talk about patches, things like that. Um, but, you know, and those are still relatively new ideas for the tile industry. It was either mud or we fixed it with thin set. And so, um, and then the traditional mix is, uh, you know, uh, for MAPE is our four to one, four part sand to one part cement, um, you know, five to one, we see a lot out in the industry, throw lime in it if you want to go up on the wall. Um, and, and so, uh, again, a fantastic product. Uh, we have a liquid latex additive you can mix with it um, that increases uh, the, the strength of the product if you're going to use it outside, but this is designed just for floors. Uh, you can shape it, you know, create slopes, all that kind of stuff, um, you know, but certainly, again, um, you know, the, the mud is not new to this industry. The mud bed is not new. Um, now, <clears throat> within, our, within our industry, certainly, um, you know, one thing we never get to hear is uh, by the time Division 9 rolls around and we're on site for, for, a, for an installation is, you know what, guys, don't rush. We've got plenty of time. We're actually ahead of schedule. And if you, the good news is we're under budget. So if you do need to do any prep work, we've got plenty of money for it. And so it's always, we're out of money. We're out of time. Um, you know, we're, we're six weeks behind schedule. I need you out of here yesterday. And so, um, you know, when tile guys get in trouble, because, you know, if you're having to mud in a shower, um, and the question is, is if you put four to one down and you've got two and a half inches of mud sitting there, and they're wanting you to come back the next day and, and put on, you know, a liquid applied waterproofing. Well, you know, it's not going to be dry. And especially when they've got in the, the conditions tile guys have to work, work in is usually there's, there's almost never an air conditioner. Uh, you know, so you have no, con, no condition space. Uh, you know, especially if you're in a bathroom, there's usually no ventilation. Uh, it's back in, you know, away from windows or, you know, um, open areas. And, and so, it takes a while for that to dry. So then you got a product like we developed a product, Plant Slope RS, which is relatively new for us. Um, and but what's great here is it's going to feel, move, slope, um, cut, uh, and mix just like mud. Um, but it's going to it's going to set up really really quick for you uh, and allow you to be setting tile and even waterproofing within a couple hours. Um, you know even if you go several inches deep uh, with it. And so. Great product, we've had a lot of success with it. Modified mortar bed, so this is kind of a premium, um, you know, already got the latex in it, um, mortar bed. So for, you know, if you've got to go out and do a, a scratch and render um, over lath, um, you know, this is, a, this is a great product. If you've got, you know, high-end mud work you need to do for an exterior application, again, this is a great option. Uh, very high um, uh, compressive and, and inflectional strengths for mud, so for, for those those tricky, uh, installations now. <clears throat> Planet Top 330 Fast is is uh, it's a couple years old now, relatively new. Uh, fantastic product, and I like to think of it as patch for wall. Um, so again, you know, floor installers are are used to, to patching floors. You know, maybe not as much tile guys, but you know, you've got when you just got little little dips, and you know, if you say you you you've got a wall that you know is around studs, and it's uh, you know they. Nothing's plumb. They've wrapped them, and you know, it's all uneven. You've got some low spots in the middle of these, um, uh, in the middle of your wall that need to be filled in. If you're if you're doing the traditional scratch and, and render, you know, and putting your 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 you know you're taking time because you, you got to wait for your scratch to dry, and then apply your render coat, and then you got to wait for it to dry. And um, so this product is fiber reinforced. It's designed for you to be able to walk right up to that. Make, you know, you've got this mixed up. Drop it on your table. <clears throat> get it on your trowel. Uh, key it into the wall, um, you know, and, and and float out your section. Get it, get it, get it flat. Get it, get it up to to specs, and then you're within a couple hours. You're setting tile over it. So 
uh, again, I treat this like, and you can use it on a floor too, uh, certainly, but it's, uh, um, uh, but really designed for walls, um, sticky, great product. So uh, this is a, this will really help you if you're doing a big project with walls, you know, for your guys to go in, uh, get these walls cleaned up and get them, get them flat so you can do your installation. So patching and skim coating, I mentioned this, uh, skim coating I know is not something you see very often in tile industry and, and patching is even somewhat of an alien idea. Um, but this is really helpful. So again, if you've got, you know, small areas on a, on a floor that are low, um, that you need to get brought back up and, and you need to move quickly, um, you know, a product like Mopchin Quick Patch is fantastic. I mean, it's a very versatile product. Um, you can go deep with it in cases where if you've got like a trench or something you need to fill in, you can go up to three, excuse me, three inches with it, um, you know, and it dries really quick for you, you know, within an hour or so, uh, you, you'll be, you, you can stand on it. And so it, it, it dries quickly, you know, for filling in small areas and getting them up to where you need to go, it's something to consider. And again, it's very versatile. Something else to consider, um, tile, tile installations are not really used to worrying about moisture um, so you know, when we talk about moisture um, you know other segments of the industry are, are very familiar with it and and understand like hey you know what, what uh, have you have you done a, a calcium chloride test or a relative humidity test and um, you know what are what are the numbers and so that's that's very common on you know for other segments of the flooring industry but tile nobody cares right because uh, you know we put tile in fountains and pools and um, so we're not worried about it. Um, but if you are going to patch a floor or put substrate prep products down, you need to make sure if you're not taking any uh, moisture readings that you put something down or you suspect there could be moisture issues uh, or high moisture, you want to put something down that's not affected by moisture. And these products, Planet Prep, MRS, and Quick Patch, Mopchin Quick Patch, are not affected. They're exterior rated. Uh, so if there is high moisture, it won't affect your patch and, it, and it, you know it and we know like I said tile there, there are other issues that can come from high moisture in a tile industry but uh, those are generally aesthetic issues not structural so that's not going to break down if there is high moisture present okay so primers now i get it you're looking at the primers right now and you're probably thinking about turning off the webinar so just to be clear we're going to talk about primers because we're going to talk about self levelers next but we're going to talk about these before we talk about these, okay? If you don't have a primer, you do not have a self-leveling project, okay? Um, there is one exception to that we'll talk about in just a minute, but you know, this is something that, you know, I, I always try to stress with installers and especially, you know, as, as self-leveling come, becomes more and more popular uh, within the tile industry, just really beating it over, you know, people's heads. Um, if you're picking up, bags of self leveler you should be picking up primer with it you know that and if you're selling it to somebody if they're ordering it from you you know ordering a self leveler from you uh, they should be ordering a primer you should be asking the question what primer do you want with it and you know so um, <clears throat> as far as the primers we make available um, primer T is kind of a jack of all trades it's uh, very versatile uh, you can use it under almost any conditions um, it, uh, it used to be white and it dried kind of clear, so it was kind of hard to see once it was dry. So we put, added color to it a couple years ago. Uh, so it's very, um, it's very easy to see. Primer L is a latex-based primer. It's just for um, for porous substrates like porous concrete or uh, gypsum. Um, you dilute this. Uh, you always dilute this. And so you, uh, the only time I've ever seen any issues with Primer L is is if somebody pours it out and rolls it on. And so you know. Um, you know, one gallon of this makes four gallons. So you, you that that's a that's a great return on your investment right there. So make sure you dilute it before you use it. Primer WE. This is uh, this is our water-based epoxy primer. Uh, so most of these products, when they dry, um, they're they're dry to the touch. They're not tacky feeling. Uh, but WE actually, when it's uh, once it's set, it, it is it's tacky. Um, this has been used. We've had this product for a long time. And we have a lot of installers that, that love it and swear by it. And so uh, it's a two component. Again, it's an epoxy, but it's water-based. Um, so it's, 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 it's pretty easy on you, but you just roll it on. And then um, again, you have a, a tacky, um, 
tacky substrate that you can uh, pour yourself leveler over. Eco Prim Grip's a great product. We introduced, uh, I don't know, six, seven years ago, eight years ago. Um, this is a bond promoting primer. It's acrylic that has got sand in it, basically, silica sand. Uh, so once it dries, it's got a very rough texture and it gives you that rough texture you need to bond to. So if you just want to set a tile, so tile over tile, it's great because, you know, theoretically, if you've got a tile installed already down, it should all be flat. So you roll this over, uh, once it's dry, you can spread your, your, you know, your mortar, your thin set mortar right over the top of it and set tile, um, you know, or you can pour self levelers. Um, primer ease and epoxy primer so again under really um high high traffic areas certain applications uh that call for the strength of an epoxy we, we have those uh the epoxy primer as well so again we have to do this and you need to know what's available to you reach out uh, to a sales rep um reach out to tech services um find out what which one's right for you and for your project so on our self levelers <clears throat> we and if you're wondering why we have so many, I understand that this is actually not all of them, um, but we'll, we'll just kind of hit the highlights here. So generally they're named uh, the no Novo plans and the ultra plans, the Novos are uh, normal drying time and tile the next day, okay? Ultra are rapid drying and uh, that means you're gonna be tiling within a couple hours, okay, after you, after you pour it. So um you know the there are certain attributes to each one and that's why there's so many um you know anything from like extreme to up in the top right corner is exterior rated so again much like quick patch it's not affected by moisture so if you have a high moisture environment this is the product you want to use um you know you've got uh ultra plan light for instance is you know half the density so half the weight of a standard leveler so if you've got structural concerns but you're needing to do prep work you know this is an option um, you know, to where you're not adding as much weight to the structure. Um, I told you about the exception to the rule, Polyplan RSL is a new product. It's actually two components. So uh, you've got the part A bag you see there, and then there's a part B liquid that you mix with it. You don't mix water with it. Um, and you can pour it directly over an existing tile um, installation without a primer. Um, you can pour it over, um, you know, epoxy floors without a primer, uh, epoxy you know, like moisture barriers, for instance. Um, so again, um, that, that's the one exception, you know, but again, that's a, a specialized product. Um, down on the bottom, your Nova Plan 2 Plus, Novo Easy Plus, Ultra Plan 1 Plus, Ultra Plan Easy, those are your everyday workhorses out in the industry that um, have been around for a long time. Um, that, that, like I said, that thousands of bags go, go down every day. And so, um, but again, uh, so it just it just depends on what your project is, uh, what your budget is, and you know what your overall needs uh, are for the project. So please reach out to a sales rep or, or tech services, and we can make sure you got the right product. So <clears throat> back to the standard, um, we when, when they talk about the mortar, um, you know, it, it's really interesting because there's some very specific language in here that talks about how you how you're going to apply the mortar. Um, which may seem sort of unusual, but you know we'll we'll, we'll dig a little deeper on this, and, and hopefully it makes more sense. Um, you know, but certainly the SSD uh, wiping down your uh, your substrates is always important. Um, the, uh, the the trowels, um, you know, when these when you see these two trowels here, the slant ridge and the like, Euro notch, uh, most commonly called. Um, you know, when these these showed up. You know, a while back, you know, along the, si the same time as, uh, um, as, as everybody was calling it thin tile, everybody looked at these and were like, what in the world is going on here? And so, um, but the idea being um, everything we're, we're about to talk about is all about achieving maximum coverage on our tiles. And, you know, and again, we talked about this, you know, the game has changed. It's, we're not, we don't have a 12 by 24 we can just pick back up and check and see what kind of coverage we got on it that's it, it, that that's not that simple and so um these are different trials that are designed to help get that maximum coverage and so um but just like with standard tile we're always going to start by using that flat side of the trial i don't care what shape is on the rest of it you're always going to start with that flat side of the trial key it into the to the substrate um and then key it into the back of the tile and then as you are applying the mortar um you, you want to think and make sure you understand like well what what direction um what direction am, am i setting this tile so that's gonna because what you do on the tile 
needs to mirror the substrate. And so what I should probably say is what you do on the substrate should mirror what you do on the tile because you're going to comb mortar on both. So you've already keyed it in. Now you've got the mortar out on the, the back of the tile. You're combing it on these larger tiles. You've got to kind of find that midpoint and you kind of create that ridge right down the middle and you pull out, making sure you go all the way to the edge. Um, you know, and again, this starts to sound kind of silly, but um, trust me, it's very, very important um, so that you can have the confidence that when you're placing these large tiles, um, that, that you're then, you know, able to achieve the coverage you need. And so uh, you, you comb it out and then it has to match. You want to, it needs to be the exact same direction over on your substrate of what you, you know, the way you're going to set that tile. So uh, with that to say, like, so if you were going to turn this tile long ways, you know, so, um, the you want to comb um, on your substrate you know north and south say if you're doing a wall and so that way they would match up uh, but if you were uh, going to turn this up on end long end going up um, that way you would you know um, you would want to comb it east to west on the wall uh, so that again it all matched up and you could get the coverage you need so i told you about um we develop specific products. And so we'll start with Ultralight S2. So this product is was specially designed, um, part of our Ultralight series. And um, and the S2, which we'll talk about, it gets back to the um, the ISO standard uh, for deformability. Uh, this is, um, and this product has some specific characteristics that make it very useful uh, for using uh, with GPT. And so, a uh, single component, you don't, you, and, but you still achieve the S2 rating. So you don't have to add liquid latex to it. You just add water, but it is highly, highly, highly modified. A lot of latex in this product. Um, you know, it's very creamy. If you've ever worked with any of our lightweight products, they're, they're all very creamy and smooth. This product is even more so, um, you know, and it wets out really, really well. Uh, it also has, um, it has 20% recycled content in it, which is great uh, for, on the sustainability side. Uh, and for projects that are going for that, um, you know, and then it gives you lots of open time uh, to work with. Again, the standards it meets, it's a, um, you know, 118.15. So uh, that's obviously important on the ANSI side of things. Uh, you see that ISO classification, uh, C2E, S2P2, that S2P2, you don't see very often. If you're looking at ISO uh, classifications of, of mortars around the industry, it is very very rare to see S2P2 because that means these are it is a very very highly modified product with very very strong uh, <clears throat> bond strengths and um, as well as deformability uh, flexibility. So again, this just kind of goes through that that S2P2. So that's that deformability. How how much can that mortar move? How much can it flex before it breaks? Before it shears? And if you're sticking giant panels up above people's heads and uh, trying to make sure that these high-end installations last. That's something you really want to know. And so, Eco GPT. So this is a, a brand new product for us. Uh, we, we just introduced it this year. So um, uh, one of the difficulties that you see, you, know, you, you might have picked up on for um, installing these panels is, you know, you're putting an awful lot of, of, of mortar down. And so, um, and the idea of being able to do all that, you know, before, you know, before the mortar skins over, if you're having to put it on the, uh, you know, spread 50 feet on the back of a tile, 50 feet on a substrate, um, you know, and then ultimately getting it embedded and, and all that, um, you know, we, so, and when we recognize that, and so uh, this, uh, and when it, and it all goes back to, you know, all the different things we do as a company, all the different lines, um, you know, from our adhesive side, uh, this is a hybrid polymer um, moisture cured technology, and this um, is similar uh, to technologies that have been used in that we've used in the wood industry. Um, you know that we that we were able to develop this that is uh, very has specific characteristics that are useful for us when when setting um, gauge porcelain tiles. And so uh, the the biggest thing here <laughs> is that you're you're not going to mix it. You just open the bucket uh, and it's ready to go. Um, you know, and and you're only applying it to um, to the tile, not not to the tile and the substrate. And so, um, but it, it it has great grab, so it's going to hold these panels in place. Um, 
you know, the, the, there are there are some limitations um, as we kind of go through this to keep in mind. And, and most importantly, uh, this is not for floors. Okay, so you do not use this adhesive, um, the GPT Eco GPT adhesive on floors, only only on walls. Uh, wet areas are fine, um, so you can use it in a shower, no problem. Um, now there there are horizontal applications you can use it because you can use it for countertops, um, but um, but not on, again not on floors. So. Uh, uh, Wet, dry, all fine, uh, but we do want to keep it interior um, for, for this product. And so, um, substrates, it's got a, a long list of substrates, all the usual suspects, um, as well as directly bonding to existing tile um, and, and dry conditions. Uh, then you also have steel, epoxy, and fiberglass. And so, and it can go over uh, membranes. So, that's important as well. So, Crack isolation and, and waterproofing membranes. Um, so again, single component. Uh, you're not having to do anything to it. You just open the bucket and start using it. Um, it it's very smooth. It's very easy to trial. Um, you know, it the it, it does a great job of breaking down uh, the ridges behind the tile when you place it um, and and displacing that air, and so that you can really you know um, get good coverage that you need. Um, it has that grab, um, it, you know, but it still allows you to move it. And so, um, so again, you, you don't want to set this six inches away from the target area and try and slide it over. Um, you wouldn't want to do that with any tile, but, um, you know, certainly you, you have the ability to adjust it relatively easily uh, once you get it in place and get everything lined up. Um, if you do get it on the face of the tile, uh, it's actually really easy to clean up uh, if you just use a dry cloth towel, it wipes right off. Um, you get it wet, it kind of you can make a mess of it. So uh, just a dry cloth and then wipe right off the surface. Even if it dries on the surface, it's actually fairly easy to remove. Again, uh, you've got plenty of working time. Um, you're gonna, you are still, we still do want you to key it in. Um, so use the flat side of the trowel to key it in to really make sure it gets in those micro pores of the uh, of the porcelain. Uh, then put your notches in. Just make sure they're all the same direction. Uh, and then go get it placed. You don't need to vibrate it like you do on some of the others. We'll talk about that real quick. Um, but again, these are the trowel sizes. Uh, the, those slant uh, the, the slant trowel is actually, we found, I think, the best, but these other two sizes, you know, in a quarter by quarter squares uh, in, in every tile truck in America will do the job as well. So other uh, other existing products that are great for um, for for GPT, any of our two component systems, Granny Rapid, Caravan, Caroelastic, Caravan T, Caroelastic. Um, Caraflex Super, just so you know, this is a, a new product for us here in the US. Um, this has a, a high transfer technology. It wets out really well, a lot, kind of like we talked about um, on the uh, uh, on the S2, uh, not specifically designed for uh, GPT, but just for the simple fact that we're trying to get uh, coverage on uh, on a lot of big tiles these days, and it, and it does a great job of that. So LFT, obviously, been around a long time, great product, uh, and it can certainly be used in these applications. Uh, other mortars of ours um, in the lightweight category, uh, ultralight mortar and ultralight S1 quick. So if you ever are needing that uh, uh, Again, these lightweight products are, are very, very green, very sustainable, and so um, they're they're great options um, for uh, uh, for certain projects. Um, when you use standard mortars, there's um, we talk you talk about vibrating uh, using like uh, uh, sanders, things like that uh, that push vibrations through the tile. It helps uh, on these thixotropic mortars loosen up, break down the ridges. Um, you know, so that's something that's recommended within the uh, standard. Uh, lippage tuning is gonna pretty much always be used and it's actually required if you are over a meter squared. Uh, embedding these tiles uh, on floor tiles, you walk on them um, and there is actually specific steps you follow. Uh, wall tiles, it's a combination of things. Uh, certainly you can use the, the orbital sanders, the vibrating machines that, that, that some of the manufacturers, tool manufacturers have designed um, that break down those ridges, move around, but those weighted beading paddles are, are, are definitely, and you always, on all of these, you always wanna start in the middle because you're trying to force that air out to the, the, the closest edge. So you never wanna stop, you don't wanna start at the edges because then you trap air inside. So 
Uh, this is within the standard as well, the actual trap, the, 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 uh, the steps that you're supposed to follow. Um, and as crazy as it may sound to you, it really works. And it's the best way to get the coverage you need. And speaking of coverage, um, you know, so they're calling out for 80% um, on walls minimum, right? And that's within a square foot too. So not just overall, but within a square foot. Um, you, so you can't have like a big area, you know, a, a large area that just has terrible coverage within it. And so even though the rest of it may be great. And so again, this all goes back to substrate prep, prep and then, you know, taking care to make sure everything's embedded well. Um, you, again, floors is even higher. Uh, you see that tile broken right there. Um, you know, you, you, again, you, you start trying to move these things and pick these up once you set them. Um, you can you can certainly do that. So again, you want to make sure you've taken care of all this. And the edges are just very important. Always taking care to make sure the edges are fully supported because um, that's where you can really run into problems over the long term on an installation is if those edges are not supported. But that's nothing new to the tile industry. Um, it's just even more important now because you got a lot of edges to deal with here. Um, so grouts, any of our you know um, premium grouts, Ultra Color Plus FA, our new Ultra Color Plus Max. Um, uh, flex color CQ, you know, epoxy, uh, any of these certainly are suitable. Um, the sealant, uh, you want to go with the uh, 100% silicone, Mopsil T. Um, and what's interesting about this, uh, you know, and, and this of course comes in all 40 colors, um, well, 42, including Max uh, now. And then <clears throat> the, uh, when you talk about movement joints, so it, there, nothing has changed here from EJ171, the same standards that have always been quoted um you know for tile installations as far as uh you know you, it's just trying to think about this in terms though now of putting you know uh three foot by ten foot or five foot by ten foot tiles on a you know uh, you, you could be in a situation especially if it's exterior or if it's you know an, an atrium or somewhere that gets a lot of direct sunlight so you need to treat it like an exterior um you know it's, it's not uncommon to see that they're just installers are opting uh to just not even grout and just always go with sealant around them. Um, so as you're allowing for enough thermal expansion and contraction within the installation. Um, and so, but just keep in mind, you need to make sure you're going back. If that's the plan, you've got to get that, um, you've got to get all of that mortar out of the joint, um, cleaned out down to the substrate, um, you know, get that, get that back up in there and then put your, uh, put your sealant down. Um, so, cause again, you're not doing yourself any favors if you've got, uh, mortar sitting up to the uh, bottom of the tile and you're just running a bead of caulk over it. And so that's that's not going to get it done. MAFE has a lot of online resources for you. Um, so we, we have these on our website, um, reference guides for uh, floors, walls, uh, our new GPT adhesive, um, you know, and some of the, you know, to, to go back over some of the requirements and things to consider, uh, talks about service prep, all that sort of stuff. Um, We've got a online brochure that basically will cover and remind you. So if you're wondering about, and like, well, you talked about a lot of products, how am I supposed to remember all that? This is an easy resource. Um, we do, we we did about 40 of these last year around the country. Our MTI GPT trainings, um, where you have both a classroom portion, um, you know, where you dig more into those uh, standards, and um, you know, but then also the hands-on. So you, uh, so it's it's really it's a full day training. Um, you know, you, you like I said, you get the hands on experience. Um, you know, practicing these techniques we've talked about as far as combing. Um, you know, all the different you get introduced to the, to the tools and um, you know considerations, and you get to actually move these tiles around and see what challenges that brings. You know, when you're uh, when you've got uh, you know a tile that size on a rack and you're trying to move it into place and how you get that placed and what it, you know, and you can you even get to practice your steps there for uh, um, walking around on the tile to, to get it embedded. And so, um, you know, we, you know, obviously things are a little different right now uh, with the pandemic. We're, we're not doing a lot of these, uh, we're, we're not doing any within our, um, uh, within any of our facilities right now. Um, we are working on uh, being able to bring these to you um, via, uh, you know, webinars and, and live uh, live streaming 
um, options, but uh, certainly we are available. I know we've got one going on down here at a customer's um, down here in South Florida in a couple weeks. And so certainly we can still help you with that as long as we've got, you know, a good safe environment to conduct the training. Um, but we, again, take pride in being a part of this and, and helping with this. And so, um, you know, this is something we really enjoy and are really looking forward to getting back to. Um, and then that all kind of brings you back around to that idea of a qualified labor. And so um, a lot of a lot of project managers are going to uh, demand that you have, um, you know, some proof of training. Now, there are industry organizations that, that have actual programs of certification. Um, we will get you a certificate of attendance to ours um, and that you've attended one of our trainings. And, um, and, and certainly, you know, that's been more than enough to get plenty of guys um, on site and working on certain projects. And so, um, again, we, um, we look forward to that becoming an option again in the near future, hopefully. Um, you know, uh, but in the meantime, we are working to try to uh, put together a program that we could hopefully do, do some of these virtually for you as well. So, uh, but with that, um, I apologize. I think I've kind of gone over here, um, but uh, I appreciate your time and, uh, uh, and thank you. I'll hand it back over to Jim. <laughs> Thanks, Logan. Thank you for your time. And uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, this concludes today's webinar, and uh, we'll hopefully see you next time. Have a great rest of your day. Bye. Thank you.